Do you need an impact driver or an impact wrench? And what's the real difference? We'll look at the details when we get back. I'm Tim Johnson. You're watching Shop Tool Reviews. It's only been a few decades since the dawning of the cordless drill. It wasn't too long after that when someone realized, you know what, if I cut off a screwdriver, chuck it up into the drill, I can drive screws with it. And that's where it all begun. Well, then we had the dawning of an impact driver. Now, we've had impact wrenches for quite a while, in the pneumatic version anyway. And then that progressed in the cordless once we realized that cordless was strong enough to deliver. And now we have impact drivers and impact wrenches. But really and truly, what's the difference? And what do we do to determine when we need one and when we need another? Well, that's a great question. So why don't we do this? Why don't we take a look inside of these and see if there's any real differences between them? And then we'll talk about which tool do you need and which tool do you use for which jobs? What better way to tell the difference between an impact driver as we see here, and an impact wrench, then the, let's take them apart, take a look at the inside, see what kind of difference they are. Now, I'm not gonna get into model numbers, I could give them to you, but basically we've got the flagship impact drivers of Milwaukee, I think this is the Gen 3 impact driver, uh, I think they've got another generation, but still, it, this will get the job done. And uh, this is the flagship impact driver of DeWalt's as well, multi-speed impact drivers, kind of the heaviest hitting, uh, and so forth. Then we have the mid-torque impact wrenches. So we could have gone with the high torque, but I wanted to kind of, you know, show kind of middle of the road, if you will. And I'm not trying to compare Milwaukee and DeWalt. That's not the, that's not the point here. But I did want to show the same manufacturer for the impact driver and the impact uh, wrench. And I also wanted to show two different manufacturers. So that's the whole point here. Again, not to try to compare to one another. They're both pretty similar. Uh, in performance on both levels in the impact driver as well as the impact wrench. So for the most part, most of these things are pretty much put together in the same way, uh, but we're gonna remove the batteries for each of these. I probably should have showed you that they actually work, shouldn't I? Uh, and then uh, let's take these apart. And so I'll speed this up as we take them apart. So let me take them apart and then we'll slow it back down and we'll talk about the, the parts. I do want to mention one thing about the DeWalt. If you're going to take your DeWalt impact driver and impact wrenches apart, uh, you'll have to cut the decal here or either peel it where the seam is, as well as back here, you'll need to cut it or pull, or pull it off uh, or else, uh, as well as right here. If you have a multi-speed, you have to cut it there as well or else it's going to pull apart. Okay, this should be proof enough that we actually use our tools around here. A uh, little bit dirty in there. So we've got these apart now, so let's take a look at what the difference is in these. So I'm gonna pull the, uh, you see the, the motor came, comes out of the back side of the Milwaukee fuel. And then what we have here is the impact mechanism. So here's the impact mechanism on the impact driver, obviously quarter inch collet there. And, uh, and then to actually, we can take that apart if we need to. I'm gonna leave it together, but I'm just going to bump this a touch to get that off. And then out comes 
I'm going to call that the counterweight or basically the, the weight that uh, does the hammering. And that's our planetary ring gear. And there's our planetary gear. So you got two planetary gears there to where this motor actually sits in here and turns those gears and reduces the amount of RPMs that actually turns this anvil because it turns on that ring gear. And so you're, you're getting a lot of gear reduction to develop torque and develop power going to the anvil. So lay, lay that aside for a moment and we'll look at the DeWalt. DeWalt set up a little bit different, but the same idea. You got the motor hanging off the backside here. And then this just pulls apart. And the inside here is the anvil. And here is the driving or the hammering mechanism. There's the same type of ring gear, same type of planetary gear. So you got two planetary gears, same as the same as the Milwaukee. We'll weigh those in just a moment. You can see a size difference right there. But we'll weigh those in just one moment. Uh, in here, in the impact driver, you have a that washer down there where that anvil rides on. Uh, you see it's more of a squared off anvil. It's actually a Teflon disc down there that's kind of a, uh, a, a wear pad, if you will, for that to ride on. And then you see a, a cased motor here. That's a brushless motor, but you see the spline drive that sits inside those planetary gears and drives those. Now, as far as the inside of the of the Milwaukee, same idea, except instead of a squared off anvil, you see you have more of an elliptical style on there. Uh, just something that I guess Milwaukee decides to do. And then another Teflon ring there, just like on the DeWalt, you got a Teflon ring there that it rides on. But smaller anvil uh, than, a, than an impact wrench, and you'll see in a moment. But you'll see here on the, the, uh, the driving weights here of the dogs, uh, this is called like a dog clutch. And you see here on the Milwaukee's a little bit bigger than a DeWalt. Well, again, we'll weigh them in just one second. So now let's, that's the impact driver. Now let's look at the impact wrench. So we'll see. So on the front side here on the nose cone, if you will, uh, a lot of grease, which is good. We won't grease in there. Um, and then the anvil here. So instead of a Teflon ring, looks like we've got an actual metallic ring, yep, uh, of some sort, probably a hardened steel, like a washer, but acts more like a bushing. And that rides down in there so that this anvil rides against it. And that helps to eliminate any wear on the housing itself. Um, that is interesting that the, uh, that the anvil itself has like a, a built-in full-size uh, disc there. And then there's the dogs, the squared off anvil uh, that hits. And so let's take the uh, same idea here. Um, probably pull that out. There we go. So instead of two planetary gears, we get three planetary gears. Just more of a heavy duty application, uh, having those three planet planetaries. Same idea on a transmission. Uh, when you've got planetary gears, typically the more planetaries you have, the more heavy duty of a transmission you have. Uh, but same idea, the motor goes inside there, turns these planetaries against a ring gear that's in there uh, that reduces those RPMs and develops power. Um, and you see that here's where these dogs collide against one another. And as they collide, it compresses this spring here and lets it jump out and skip over and then hit it once again. So you see those spaces in there. So as they hit, the spring collapses lets this disc jump up and engage once again and hit once again. So that's the hammering sound on an impact wrench or impact driver that you're hearing are those colliding, those dogs colliding. Again, we'll measure those in just one moment. Let's pull the, uh, let's pull the Milwaukee apart here. And by the way, this was generation one of the, uh, of the mid torque. So this was the first mid torque they came out with. So once I pull that pin out, here we go. So there's our brushless motor on the back and here's our nose cone with all our anvil in it. 
There's our ring gear. And then here's our driving weight. We'll weigh that in one moment as well. And then here's our anvil in here. And we have a ball bearing in there. So if you're taking one of these apart, don't lose that. There we go, the ball bearing. And you see another Teflon ring in there where this anvil rides again. So it does have a squared off anvil on this one. Where's off, see, see the difference here in their impact driver, they have more of an elliptical and in their impact wrench, they got a, uh, more of a squared off. You'll see that design in impact wrenches and impact drivers as well. Um, so anyway, so now we've got a, a larger half inch anvil here and we have a large counterweight there. Again, three planetary gears, just like the DeWalt. So you see, as you step up in that power, you're seeing differences in like planetary gears, the size of the weights and so forth. So let's go ahead and let's, uh, let's weigh these and just get an idea of the difference here. So let's start with the DeWalt impact driver and I've got it on grams looking at 225 grams. And if I go to the DeWalt impact wrench, so 225 grams versus 425 grams. So almost doubling the weight of your driving mechanism, if you will. And then if, uh, if we look at the Milwaukee impact driver, 255 grams and the impact wrench, the mid torque, 530 grams. So we're more than doubling our uh, driving size on the Milwaukee uh, on their impact wrench versus the impact driver. So again, impact driver on DeWalt, 225. Impact driver on the Milwaukee, 255. And the impact wrench on the DeWalt, 425. And the impact wrench on the Milwaukee, 530. So there's some of your differences there in the build uh, of an impact wrench. Really a lot of the same mechanisms. So even though the anvil may be different, obviously we've got a half inch or a, maybe you may even have a 3 8 anvil, even a 3 quarter inch anvil uh, versus a, uh, you know, a quarter inch hex. But as far as the driving mechanism, it's a lot the same. You have an electric motor or a cordless motor, battery powered motor, that's then driving, directly driving the planetary gears, that's then driving it around a ring, and then driving your anvil. And on the anvil, it's actually hitting. Let me do this on the Milwaukee, maybe able to show you a little better. So as this circles around and hits, as we hit, then it compresses the spring, it compresses this spring right here. I can get it to compress a little bit. So as it compresses that spring, it allows this to, to jump over and hit once more, jump over and hit once more. And that's providing that hammering, that impacting force uh, on your impact wrencher on that actual socket. So let's get these back together, see if they work again, and then we'll wrap this up. Just in case you believe that they don't all work. They all work and all the speed. So yes, miracles do happen. Now you want me to boil this down really, really simply? It's this. It's no different than what we see here. This is a bigger hammer, this is a smaller hammer. Can you drive nails with both of them? Sure. Can you bang out dents with both of them? Sure. But when it comes down to, I need to straighten a frame or I need to uh, bend some rebar, whatever, I'm definitely going to go for that heavier hammer, right? Same is the case with an impact wrench and an impact driver. You saw that really as far as the mechanisms go and the engineering behind them and 
how they operate, they're identical. Just it gets smaller, the weights get smaller, uh, but the, the RPMs and the impacts per minute are almost inverse. So an impact driver is going to turn more RPMs. It's also going to deliver more impacts per minute. Impact wrench, they're going to slow those rotations down. They're also going to slow down those impacts per minute for the sheer fact of you're slinging a heavier hammer, hammer right? I mean, probably with a small hammer like this and repetition, you can go a, a lot of times of, of striking something. Whereas on a bigger hammer, you're probably not going to be able to spin that as fast and you're going to be more accurate with going a little bit slower. That's the idea here. But you also realize of how they're delivering all that power and you see the size difference and the weight difference of, of you know, how they can deliver that energy to the actual anvil or to the actual uh, chuck, quarter inch hex chuck, if you will, uh, on the impact driver. So, Again, not a lot of difference between all of these, just the size and the weight and how they're delivering it, whether it's through a, through a square chuck or through a square anvil or through, whether it's through uh, your typical quarter inch adapter on the impact drivers. And when it comes down to it, really and truly, you're needing to drive screws, get an impact driver. You're needing to take off bolts, get an impact wrench. Now, Will an impact driver take off nuts and bolts? Absolutely. I would say, you know, if you're looking for something to take off 10 millimeter bolts and, you know, even into 13 millimeter half inch nuts and bolts, yeah, sure, an impact driver is going to do fine. In fact, a lot of times I'll grab that just for the sheer fact of having a, a smaller and handier tool, if you will, and I can zip those off, whether it's in the interior of a vehicle, under a hood, what have you. Definitely, that's no problem. If you're needing, you know, lug nuts, don't reach for an impact driver. I get this question all the time. They say, well, Tim, we saw your test and we saw that how much power these impact drivers deliver. That's more than the lug nuts are torqued on my car. Why can't I use them to take off my lug nuts? Here's my point on that. In a pinch, can you try it and see if it'll do it? Absolutely, by all means. But I would not buy this tool, an impact driver, for removing lug nuts. I don't care how powerful it is. It's not meant for doing that. And you're gonna get frustrated at one point because one of them's gonna get corroded or, or one of them's gonna get over tightened at the tire shop and it's not gonna be able to take it off. That's not what these tools were meant to do. That's what an impact wrench does. By all means, if you need to drive a screw, can you put an adapter on your impact wrench and drive screws? Sure, it's probably not gonna drive it as fast. It'll be more powerful, uh, but then the impact driver's gonna drive those screws faster. So again, driving screws, grab your impact driver. Nuts and bolts, bigger fasteners, grab an impact wrench. It's that simple, it really is. So, hey, let us know what you think about it. If you like this video, hit that like and subscribe button. If you didn't like this video, give us that thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling. Mm -hmm.